Hi, Dan Toombs, the Curry Guy here, and welcome to the Curry Shack, where I'm gonna be making one for my brand new book, The Curry Guy Barbecue. We're gonna be making some roast chicken, some tandoori roast chicken, spatchcock chicken on the Kamado Joe back here, and it's gonna be delicious. In fact, I'm gonna be making three roast chickens and also a leg of lamb, because we're having some people over today. But for right now, we're gonna focus on one chicken so I can show you exactly how it's done in the book. Also, as I say, I'm going to be cooking this over indirect heat on the Kamado Joe barbecue. Um, if you're working on a standard kettle grill, that will work really well too. And be sure to watch this video all the way to the end so you not only see how this chicken turns out, but also how to set up your kettle grill to get great results. So to start this out, we need to make the marinade. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, about a tablespoon of tandoori masala, tablespoon of cumin, then we've got about a tablespoon of coriander, and a tablespoon of cashmere chili powder. You could use paprika if you don't really want a spicy mix there. And I got a little bit of garam masala here. I'm going to take about two teaspoons, tablespoon, about that. Got about a teaspoon, so just a, just a little bit there. I got a teaspoon of uh, turmeric and a teaspoon of Amcor powder. Amcor powder, by the way, is dried mango powder. It just gives it a nice tart flavor. To that, I'm going to add just a little bit of salt. So let's go ahead and Sprinkle that in there. Add some pepper. Now I just want to whisk. This is a little just out of this some uh, distilled white vinegar. Put some of that in there to whisk in. That's just uh, about 70 milliliters, not a lot. And a good dose of garlic and ginger paste. And then the garlic and ginger paste, you can add as much as you like. I'm going to add about two tablespoons here. To this, I need to add about three tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm not measuring, I just know that I like lemon juice. So add it, there's about a tablespoon there, another tablespoon here. And that's gonna be a nice, Oh, you can. I can even add a little bit more. So I have about three tablespoons, about three tablespoons of lemon juice. And now I just need to make sure that this is all a nice paste. And so I'm probably going to have to add a little bit of water. And uh, we want this to be a nice, not a, not, a, not a thick paste, but one that we can spread easily over the chicken. So about maybe two tablespoons of water there. That's a nice thick paste that I can put all over the chicken. So I'm going to put this to the side now. And bring in this chicken. So the chicken is going to be cut right down the center of the breast. Now I do know that a lot of people remove the backbone. So this bit here to spatchcock the chicken. I don't do that. There's a lot of meat on that bone, believe it or not. In fact, uh, we just came back from uh, uh, Sri Lanka not too long ago, and that was, a, that was made into a curry. So, you know, it's nice. You cut that into chunks. There's no reason to throw it away. Obviously, if you're making a stock and you want to do that, go for it. I like to cut it right down the center here, right down the center of the breast. Because I think it lies better when it's in the... Uh, when it's on the uh, barbecue. So I got that there, put that over, and now I just want to push this down. And that's how it's going to sit on the barbecue. Now what I want to do is slide my finger right underneath between the skin and the flesh. And that way we can add the marinade not only to the skin, but underneath so it gets right into the flesh. Take some time to do that as it really does make a difference in the flavor. So 
Now I'm going to take this uh, roasting tray. We're not going to be using the roasting tray. I'm just using it to marinate the meat. And then I just want to start rubbing this all over the skin itself and underneath the skin. And what's on the outside is going to make it really just kind of, it's, it's going to give it a nice red tone and it's, it's just going to make it look delicious. Um, but what's underneath that skin is what's going to soak into the meat. Really give it some flavor. Now you could actually take, if you have a small paring knife, you could actually take that and go right into the um, flesh itself and make your slits underneath the skin. That would work too and it'd be very nice. I'm not going to go to all that trouble today. I'm going to get right underneath there. These, uh, some over that breast in there. And then I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to put it on the other side as well. And I'm using all this, so it's going to take a little while. I want to make sure that it just gets right in to the, the, the surface and the flesh. It's just gonna taste so good. Put that over again. Get all over there. You don't want a bit of marinade to be lost. But the more you can get under the skin, the better, because that's what's really gonna flavor that meat. So with this marinating away, I'm going to get to work on a couple of more chickens. Uh, this one's all ready to go. It's going to be so nice and juicy when cooked on that Kamado Joe back there. Uh, it's a fast cook as well. This is not one of those slow cooked chickens. We're going to be doing this over a, a nice high heat, making the skin nice and crispy. Crispy skin is not something you think about with tandoori chicken because usually the chicken skin is removed. But believe me, it's uh, it's worth keeping it on for this one. So uh, I'm gonna light up the barbecue and we'll come back and uh, and uh, see how it looks. All right, so we've got the Kamado Joe up to about 250 here. It's quite hot. It's perfect roasting temperature. I'm gonna open it up here and. I got my chickens here, they've been marinating. There we are. We're just going to put these so that it's breast side up. And that's the way they're going to cook the whole time. Here we are. And another. Just about managed three. I'm glad I'm not cooking four. So we're just going to close this up now, let it roast for about 40 minutes to. 60 minutes, it'll be perfect. So we're about halfway through the cook now. Lift that up, ah oh, yeah. I'm gonna baste it now. Some melted ghee. There we are, just gonna let that cook for another, oh, half hour or so. The skin's nice and crispy. I'm gonna give this one last basting. And it's ready. We got a chicken, a lamb, feast. Very happy with that. So when your chicken's this nicely done, look at that, it's just gonna fall apart. So juicy and gorgeous. You got the breasts here, just rip into those. Oh, so nice. Oh, I can hardly wait to dig into this. Go ahead and get this. Mm. 
So then, as promised, I'm going to show you how I would cook that tandoori chicken on a kettle grill. I'm not actually doing that today, but I'll show you how I set it up anyway. Because the uh, ceramic barbecues, they have the, the, uh, the plates that you can put down there, and that just that makes it so much easier. But uh, it's really not that difficult to do it on a kettle either. Um, what you have to do, and there's a, there's a number of different ways that you can cook indirectly, and I change that depending on uh, what I'm cooking. If I'm doing a really slow cook, I'll, I'll change that, and uh, I'll be sure to uh, let you know when I, when I do those videos. But for a fast cook like I've just done now, um, you can do two different things. One is, yeah, it's a good idea to have one of these for uh, either barbecue. It's a nice uh, charcoal tower. It just speeds up getting all that charcoal nice and hot. And you just pour it in both sides of the uh, barbecue and uh, just make sure that they're nice and full and steaming hot. And then you can just close up your barbecue and let it come up to heat. Now, the other way, you really don't even need these. These come with the uh, Weber, Weber, uh, kettle but um, you could actually place um, all the charcoal on one side of the barbecue and then I got these silly trays they're, too, they're a little bit too small for my um, for my barbecue but put them side by side and you put those on the other side and you and you put your grill on top and then place the chicken on top of the uh, on top of the trays but uh, obviously you need to have the, the uh, barbecue come up to heat first before you want to add your chicken. So there, there are a number of ways of doing that as well. The way I usually do it is I open up the bottom vent. That, that sucks the air in. So I open up the bottom vent all the way. And then I keep this at the top all the way open as well. And that just keeps that air flowing and the charcoal gets hotter and hotter and it really gets the barbecue nice and toasty hot. So you'd want to do that until um, you, you get your barbecue up to heat, in which this, in this case, uh, for this recipe, it's about 250 degrees Celsius. Um, so uh, obviously, if you, if you want to cook it at a lower temperature, you could do that as well. The most important thing is that you get the bird, the, the, the internal temperature of the bird to 74 centigrade or 165 Fahrenheit. But I like it that really fast cook um, on a high heat. Um, so in order to do that, uh, once I get my barbecue up to heat, obviously I put the bird in there and um, I adjust everything. I don't even touch the bottom. I leave that open and I just adjust everything here. So the more I close that, the more it's gonna cool down. And uh, with, I've found with the uh, Weber, I usually just keep it quite open all the, for the whole cook. Um, but that's really all it is. That's all there is to it. Thank you very much for watching everyone Please remember to like and subscribe and if you want to see new videos I've got a lot more on the way. So hit that notification bell and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching